Today's lesson is about RT2, RT3 and RT4. In the previous lesson, I have discussed about RT1. If you haven't seen, please seen it, please watch it first. So if a vessel is said to be RT2, then it must satisfy the requirement given in UG116E2. As per UG116E2, when the complete vessel satisfies the radiographic requirements of UW11A5, which state that category A and D but wells in the shell and head requires full radiographic examination. The first thing is that it must satisfy the requirement given in UW11A5. What is UW11A5? UW11A5 state that category A and D but wells in the shell and head requires full radiographic examination. What are category A and D but wells? Category A but wells are the longitudinal but wells in the shell, head or nozzle. These are longitudinal but wells in the shell or head or head or nozzle. And also it category A but well is the circumferential roller joint that connecting hemispherical head to shell is also considered as a category A joint. So these are category A roller joint. This category A roller joint requires full radiographic examination. What is category D but well joint? This is a category D joint, but this is not a butuvalar joint. Category D butuvalar joints are the joints that connect self reinforcing nozzle or forging nozzle to shell. This is a category D joint. This is a full penetration corner joint. This is not a butuvalar joint. This is a full penetration corner joint. The second requirement is that the spot radiographic requirements of UW11A5B for category B and C butuvals that intersects category A but wells in shell or head requires spot radiographic requirement re, radiography so that means category this is a category B but wells category B but wells are the circumferential welder joints that in shell head or nozzle or communicative chambers this is a category B but joint these are category B but joints that intersects with category A joint this is a category A joint. This is a category A joint which intersects with category B joints, which requires spot radiographic examination. And category B and C but joints in nozzle and communicating chambers, which does not require any radiography. So the court gives an exemption for category B and C. This is a category B joint in the nozzle which does not require any spot radiographic examination. So a vessel is said to be RT2, it must satisfy the requirements given in UW11A5 and UW11A5B, then the vessel is said to be RT2. There are two conditions we can apply RT2. The first, the vessel is not for lethal service. If the vessel is for lethal service, then we have to apply full radiographic examination. And if the wall thickness and material combination does not exceed that given in table UCS 57, if the wall thickness and material combination that exceeds the value given in table UCS 57, then it must be fully radiographed. Then it must be RT1. What is the advantage of RT2? The main advantage is that it will give the same joint efficiency 1 for type 1 joint. That is the main advantage, which is identical to that of RT1. And the second advantage of using the joint efficiency 1 is that we can reduce the wall thickness of the pressure vessel considerably. And hence, we can save some money for construction of the vessel. So, the next topic is RT3. A vessel is said to be RT3, then it must satisfy the requirements given in UG116E3, which state that when the complete vessel satisfies the spot radiographic examination of, which is given in UW11B. UW11B state that all but wells are spot radiographed in accordance with UW52 except category B and C but wells in nozzle and communicating chambers. That means the cat category B and C but wells in nozzle and communicating chambers are excluded 
and the rest of category B and C bodywells in shell requires port radiography and in accordance with UW52. UW52 state that bodywelder joints that require port radiography shall be examined locally with an increment of 50 feet or 50 meter. So every 50 meter the area shall be spot radiographed. And the next is RT4. A vessel is said to be RT4 when only a part of the vessel satisfies the radiography requirements of UW11A or when none of the marking RT1, RT2 or RT3 are applicable. The application of RT4 is like this. If we have a long process column and due to static head, the wall thickness of the bottom position of the column is large and which requires full radiographic examination. In accordance with the UCS 57, it must require full radiographic examination. From sender, the wall thickness of column reduces and that only requires port radiographic examination. So the column is not considered as RT1 and RT2 two and RT3 and is considered as RT4. Hope you guys enjoy this lesson. If you have any doubt, please comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you.